So three, let's test some questionable pumps from eBay. I ordered two different types and I was trying to use them in my battery analyzer and they didn't work. And this thing requires a ground sensor pump. The U pump is using a non-symmetrical supply voltage here and it's sensing the voltage on a current sensing shunt in the zero volt rail. And based on the data sheets, the inputs of these ones should work down to the zero volt rail in a non-symmetrical power supply, or basically the negative rail. But let's take a closer look at them. One is LT1006 CN8, and this is sort of a specialty niche application, precision of palm up, which from trustworthy suppliers is bloody expensive, but on eBay it was $1.44 per piece, and this one does not seem to work properly. And here is the other type, TLE2141, and it looks quite similar to the previous one, despite it's from a different maker. What surprised me is that these two pumps are from a completely different maker and also from a completely different seller on eBay, yet the housings, the packages look surprisingly similar. Let's just compare them. This looks very similar. And from the bottom, each of them has some sort of a code, a different code but the same format. A letter and two numbers under it. It's sort of odd, it's almost like these were the same thing and somebody just removed the marking and put whatever people wanted to buy on it. This is the first one, super low offset, optimized for single supply, 5 volts. The input voltage offset is sort of unbelievable here. And the input voltage includes the negative rail. The inputs go from minus 0 0.3 all the way to 3.8 volts, or at least from 0 to 3.5. And the output in low state 15 millivolts, in high state 4.4 volts. And the other one, a wide supply range, also a nicely low offset. And the common mode input voltage range again includes the negative rail. And the low level and high level voltage at the output. It doesn't say it with no load, but at 150 microamps, 75 millivolts low and 4.1 volts high. And the simplest test circuit I came up with is this. This supplies about 2.5 volts to both inputs, but the non-inverting one is about 3 or 4 millivolts above the inverting one. This is the inverting input, and the non-inverting input, 4 millivolts above. This one seems to have more resolution, 3.8 millivolts. The supply voltage is 5 volts non-symmetrical. And this is the voltage at the output of the op-amp, which makes sense. The non-inverting input is higher, so it's high in saturation. Now let's flip the inputs. Now the inverting one is actually 3.6 millivolts above, and the output is 1.76 volts. The output is now low, but this is a suspiciously high voltage for a low state, isn't it? Let's increase this resistor, increasing the voltage difference between the inputs. The inverting one is 20 millivolts higher, and it's still this voltage at the output. Let's try to increase the supply voltage to, let's say, 10 volts. And 15 volts. Quite a high low state voltage. Back to 5, I tried a different piece, it's virtually the same. And now it's getting interesting, I've put the other type into it, LT1006, and the voltage is exactly the same, or at least extremely close. A completely different type of a pump from a completely different maker. Now back to 3.6 millivolts between the inputs, checking the supply voltage again. And now I flipped the inputs back to this, and the high state voltage is this, and the other type of the pump, it's the same voltage. This is TLE2141, now let's put DLT1006 into it. They behave exactly the same. Now loading the output using a 3.3 kilo ohm resistor in the high state, pulling it down a little bit. This is LT1006, and the other one, again 4.20. If I put the inputs again, so now the inverting is 3 or 4 millivolts higher. The output is low and a 3.3 kilo ohm resistor pulling it up. 2.09 volts, LT1006, and TLE2141, again virtually the same voltage. It's almost like these two completely different op-amps contain the same circuitry. In this test, both types are basically working, but the low state output voltage is strangely high, even with no loading resistor. But now let's go to the interesting part. Up to now I was testing it in a way that the voltages at the inputs were roughly halfway between the supply rails. Now let's test it near the zero volt rail, which is how it's actually used in my battery analyzer, where it doesn't work. 
And in the battery analyzer, the output is always high, it never goes low, even when the voltage at the inverting input is higher than the non-inverting input. Now rearranging the resistive divider, there is again a small difference between the inputs, about 3.6 mV, but it's now close to the zero volt rail. The inputs are no longer halfway between the rails. Let's just verify it, this is the inverting input, this is the non-inverting input, and the output is 4.49 volts, which is right, because the non-inverting input is higher. Now let's flip the inputs, and this is where it's starting to be interesting. Now the inverting input is about 3.8 mV, the non-inverting is zero, because the inverting is higher, it should be low, but it's still high. The output is 4.46 volts. Let's give it even more differential voltage at the inputs. Now the inverting input is 20 mV above the non-inverting and the output is still high. The inverting 120 mV above, the output is still high. I basically keep increasing this resistor in the divider, desperately trying to get the output low and I can't. It's just not possible. Now the inverting input is 1.8 volts above the non-inverting and the output is still high. Bloody hell! How this is possible? And the other type exactly the same thing. There seems to be absolutely no difference in the behavior between the two types. Now it's obvious that these two completely different types of a pump contain the same internals and also that their common mode input voltage range does not include the negative rail, despite it should based on the data sheets. And of course at this point everybody's screaming, why don't I put them into a common mode input voltage range test circuit? So let's do it now, of course. This is a very simple circuit to test the common mode input voltage range of an op -amp. It has an input of a test voltage from an adjustable voltage power supply or a function generator, and it contains two resistive dividers. One resistive divider is between the test voltage and the zero volts, and the other resistive divider is between again the test voltage and the output. And of course to balance this circuit, to have the same voltage at both inputs, the output of the op -amp has to be also zero, because then both dividers basically go between the test voltage and zero volts. Of course for this test circuit to operate properly, both resistive dividers have to be equal, which means these two resistors have to be the same, and these two resistors have to be the same. Or you can of course also build it with all resistors the same. I've created a non-symmetrical supply voltage version of this, where this resistor is replaced using a resistive divider and it looks like this now. Now all the resistors are 22 kilo ohms. To be able to use all resistors the same, I'm doubling these resistors in the divider. The supply voltage comes from a non-symmetrical 5 volt power supply, and the test voltage from an adjustable bench power supply. And I'm connecting two voltmeters, one is connected to the output of the op -amp, and one to the non-inverting input. Now this one is measuring the output, and this one is the non-inverting input, and by varying the voltage from the adjustable power supply I'm changing the voltage at the both inputs at the same time, and as long as the voltage is in the common mode input voltage range, this voltage should stay at half of the supply voltage. Now the inputs have 2.5 volts at them, reducing the voltage, and when I get under about 2 volts, the voltage suddenly changes, by tens of millivolts already, and when I go back to 2 volts roughly at the inputs, it goes back to half of the supply voltage. So the lower limit for the common mode input voltage range is about 1.98 volts, and going up and looking for the upper limit, and I can go all the way to 5 volts about. Now it starts changing. So the upper limit seems to be about 5 volts, and it seems the common mode input voltage range includes or almost includes the positive supply rail, but definitely not the negative one. So that's a very simple way of measuring the common mode input voltage range, and the other type, it seems to be exactly the same one, from 1.98 volts to about 5 volts, which is the supply voltage. So that's it. The conclusion is, these two different types are actually the same thing, none of them is what the marking says. The low and high state output voltage is completely different than the data sheets say. The common mode input voltage range is also completely different than the data sheets say. So I guess they took some very cheap common op -amps, or op -amps they couldn't get rid of, removed the markings and put the markings of types on it and that sell well. Let's not forget about the supply current measurement. At 5 volts, 82 microamps. At 15 volts, 331 microamps. And the other type exactly the same at 15 volts and also at 5 volts, 
another indicator it has to be the same thing. So don't always trust components from eBay. That's it and if you like my videos, please consider supporting my channel using Patreon or the thanks button, based on how much value you receive from my videos, or at least subscribe, like and recommend my videos to your friends. And big thanks to all of you who already support me.